All right. So now let's look at the first type of our ADSO, which is data mod ADSO, which is similar to the cube. Okay. So purpose and structure. So this data mod ADSO is used for reporting and analysis. Behavior is equal to the info cube of the past. There are three core tables, which are uh, inbound table, the activator table, and the change log table. Change log table is not used. It is still there, but it is empty. So inbound table is basically your fact table, F table, which has uncompressed data. The second table is the active data table, which is your E table, which is E table of the past, which is a compressed fact table. And the change log table is not used in data mod ADSO. This ADSO can contain info objects and or fields. This means this allows you to load the data into the BW without assigning info objects if you don't want to. In this ADSO, info objects that are display only attributes are not allowed. Also, if you are trying to include a field which has the following data type, then it is not allowed. String, raw, raw string, DF16 raw and DF34 raw. These fields are not allowed. Data load and activation. The data is initially loaded into the inbound table, which is your F table. When you activate the data, the data is copied to the active data table and grouped according to the aggregation behavior, which is similar to the InfoCube compression. Once the activation is done, the data is deleted from the inbound table. The change log is not filled, but it still exists. No additional keys can be specified because if you remember from the past InfoCube, all the characteristics are basically keys. So similarly, that's a logical key which comprises of all the characteristics. Only additive deltas can be loaded, meaning you cannot have overwrite functionality. The key figures can have an aggregation of minimum, maximum and summation. When you create this ADSO, you can assign characteristics and key figures to something called groups. But this group is just to have a sort and a proper organization. It does not have anything to do with the performance. Basically, when you access this ADSO in the Eclipse Query Designer, then you'll have a sorted and organized way of accessing the characteristics. For this, this, for this ADSO, requests can only be deleted if the request has not yet been activated. Why? Because when you activate the request or in the past, if you want to compare, when you compress the request, the request and uh, request related attributes are no longer there in the E table. Similar thing happens here and that's why request by request deletion is not possible after you activate it. So this is just a pictorial depiction. You can see that the data first comes and sits in the inbound table, which is your first table. And then when you activate, it goes to the active data table. No data goes to the change log. So basically your inbound table is your F table and your active data table is your E table. And as you can see in the inbound table, the request ID and other attributes are there, but in the active data table request and the request related attributes are no longer there. And reporting happens on the union of table one and two. So let's see the salient points for extraction and reporting. For extraction, the full and the initial delta instruction reads the data into the further data target from a union of inbound and active data table. And the data for the data extraction for delta is always read from the inbound table. And if a delta extraction is connected, then you cannot activate a request without first sending the delta because delta is request by request and when you activate request id is gone so that's why if a target is connected via a delta extraction you first have to complete the delta and then you can activate it this adso can be used as a source or target for the transformations coming to the reporting side reporting reads the data from the union of inbound and active data the query reads data from the inbound table and from the table of active data. So that means it is not mandatory or necessary to activate the data. The query can still read the data if you haven't activated any data and the, all the data is sitting in inbound table. It is still possible to have the query. The data is, is, data is read consistently, meaning if there is a failed request, then the query will ignore it and it will only show you data from the successfully loaded data. So it is stable and it will always show you up to the successfully loaded request data. So this is just the final picture. As you can see, we have the source and then we have the inbound table as the first table. Then when you activate the data, which is equal to the compression of the past, it goes to the active data table. Change log is not filled. Reporting happens as a union of active data and inbound data. And the target 
when you want to send the full or the initial extraction it uses both it uses a union of inbound and active but if you want to send delta then it only uses the inbound table so that is the difference so this is the details on the data mart adso next we will look at the standard adso